Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. So this is the lab on additional poles and zeros. Yeah, the references include Control Systems Engineering Book, 6th edition by Norman S. Nice. So the objectives of this lab are to evaluate the effect of additional poles and zeros upon the time response of second order systems. The minimum required software packages include the MATLAB, Simulink and the Control System Toolbox. So, we have studied so far the effects of uh, changing the magnitudes of poles uh, and uh, their imaginary parts and their real parts and their effects on the rise time, overshoot and settling times. So, what we need to do now is to evaluate and analyze the systems further. The formulas that we have studied so far can only be applied to second order systems but can we use the same methods to find the overshoot rise time settling time for higher order systems for example third order fourth order fifth order systems so what we do is that we don't have uh, the exact formula as you know so under certain conditions a system with more than two poles or with zeros can be approximated as a second order system so how and when do we do that uh, we'll just learn in a minute so we ignore a third or a higher order pole so that the system is remained or is left with just two complex dominant poles so what happens when we add a pole the effects of addition of a pole to closed loop transfer function are as follows the pole as the pole moves towards the origin in s plane the rise time increases okay as the pole moves towards origin that means the pole is moving towards uh, the center of the plane the rise time will increase and the maximum overshoot will decrease as far as the overshoot is concerned adding a pole to the closed loop transfer function has just the opposite effect to that of adding a pole to forward path transfer function or you may say open loop transfer function as discussed in the last article so uh, you must note down and remember that you are adding a pole to a open loop transfer function or a closed loop transfer function the effect that has been mentioned over here is for the closed loop transfer function and it's opposite to the effect that happens when you add a pole to open loop or forward uh, path transfer function this is for the closed loop transfer function i'm sorry if i uh, said it for the open loop so this is for the closed loop transfer function and this is for the open loop transfer function which is totally opposite further the addition of left half pole tends to slow down the system response that means uh, the rise time will increase and your system will slow down the effect of addition of pole becomes more pronounced as the pole location drifts away from imaginary axis so the imaginary axis is you can say a threshold for the system and if you move your pole away from the imaginary axis the effect of that pole becomes more pronounced more observable the addition of a right half pole will make overall system response to be an unstable one so if you have a positive pole or a right hand pole you should know that you'll lead to an unstable system further away in the left half plane the pole is the better so the farther away the pole is in the left half plane it's the more better condition because you can further ignore that pole and approximate your system to a second order system we assume that the exponential decay is negligible after five time constants so that means that if a real pole is five times farther to the left than the dominant poles we assume that the system is represented by its dominant second order pair of poles so this means that if you have three poles okay listen carefully if you have three poles and the third pole the left 
most pole is five times farther to the pole exactly right to it which is the dominant pole so then you can ignore that pole or approximate that system with three poles to a system with two poles and thus you can measure the outputs analyze the outputs and compare the outputs of such a system to with a second order system so and then you'll have formulas you have all the techniques to measure the uh, rise time overshoot peak time and other characteristics of the system so that's why and that's how we do a second order approximation with using this technique now we'll move to addition of a zero the effect of addition of zero to closed loop transfer function results in you should remember that this is for closed loop transfer function which means that uh, you are applying or adding a zero to a feedback system this makes the system overall response faster rise time decreases the rise time peak time decreases but overshoot increases okay and addition of right half zeros means system response slower and system exhibits inverse response such systems are said to be non minimum phase systems so you should know that in in exams i would be asking you guys that what are non minimum phase systems so addition of right half zeros means system response would be slower and left half zeros means overall response faster and the system would ex exhibit inverse response which will render it to be a non minimum phase system so here are the command required for our tasks you can use the num denum line mode transfer function um, commands you can use the lti view but we'll use something different uh, which i would recommend so let's move to the tasks and then i'll give you an example of how to do them so we have in total four tasks what does he say over here using simulink add a pole to the second order system of prelab 1a and plot the step responses of the system when higher order pole is non existent at minus 200 minus 20 minus 10 and minus 2 so you have to add a pole to the second order system of prelab 1a and the location of that pole you uh, you would vary that from minus 200 to minus 20 minus 10 and minus 2 make sure your plots uh, make sure that your plots are on a single graph using the simulink lti viewer and then normalize all the plots to a steady state value of unity record the percentage overshoot settling time peak time and rise time for each response so basically we'll see that what is prelab 1a prelab 1 has this transfer function 25 over s square plus 4s plus 25 and what does he say that you need to add a pole to the second order system prelab 1a and plot the step responses so you need to add a pole to this transfer function and the location of these uh, the pole that you have to add is at minus 200 minus 20 minus 10 and minus 2 so how would you do that Uh, using the lab information that i gave you in previous uh, lab you are going to use the simulink lti viewer so i've made example for you over here you can see that we have a transfer function over here which is 1 over s plus 2 and a transfer function over here which is 1 over s plus 1 it's getting the same step input and both of them have been marked by me as output point of uh, linear analysis points look at this i have marked it as open loop output uh, both of these wires okay so what does he say that uh, you have to add a pole to this transfer function 25 over s square plus 4 s plus 25 so i'll just change the values over here this is 25 over s square plus 4 s plus 25 okay so that would be 1 425 i'll just apply it okay so this is sk plus 4s plus 25 now this needs to be added with a pole and i'll just do as you can see 1 4 25 
okay so this is again 1 over s square plus 4s plus 25 so what I have done over here is that I have implemented the transfer function that has been given in our manual which is 25 over s square plus 4s plus 25 and what does he um, need is that using Simulink add a pole to the second order system of prelab 1a and prod the step responses of system when higher order pole is non-existent and the system of uh, second um, given in the prelab 1a is 25 over s square plus 4s plus 25. So what do we need to do now is that we need to add a pole to this system. So what happens when we add a pole to this system? You can see that this is a system without a pole ad being added and now we are going to add a pole to the system. I'll delete this connection from here. I'll just copy it and then I'll paste it. Okay. So you can see that this is another block and what I'm going to do over here is that one I'll remove all these uh, coefficients and it will say that it's 1 and then what I'll do is that I'll place 0 1 so it should give me 1 over s So, I don't know why it's not showing me 1 over s over here. Let me just do it 1 over s plus 1. And then okay, so I was doing something wrong. It is 1, 0 for 1 over s okay so this is our denominator now now what is this what have i done i've added a pole at 0 to our system so okay so you must know that 1 over s is basically a pole being added to this system uh, and the pole is at 0 so we need to add the pole at minus 200 so what i'll do is I'll place the denominator coefficient in such a way that our pole becomes at minus 200 so what happens is 1 and 200 so you can see that this has added a pole at minus 200 to this system so now uh, here's the original system and here's a system with a pole at minus 200 what I'll do now is that I'll click on analysis and then we'll have control design sorry linear analysis and here you can see that we are given the linearize option so here are two systems one is the step response for system step to transfer FCN and this is step to transfer FCN1 so you can see that in the model we have step to transfer FCN over here and step to transfer FCN1 over here so the graph that, that is in the lower portion of this window belongs to the FCN1 and which is in the upper portion of the window it belongs to the step to transfer function you can also change these names and you can see that how do we change it this is for I will write it as original FCN and here I can write pole at minus 200 FCN so what will happen is that uh, our names over here would change I'll linearize it again and now this is step to original FCN and this is the step to pole at minus 200 FCN I'll group them so that uh, you can see them in a single graph. I'll just click on normalize. So now you can see that both of these systems are giving approximately the same uh, outputs. 
so why is that because the pole at minus 200 is creating very 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 uh, less difference in the output because it's a non-dominant pole um, the both of these graphs are approximately giving the same outputs the same overshoot time the same rise time and the same setting times but what happens if we change the pole location such that uh, the non-existing pole or the non-dominant pole becomes dominant I'll just click on 1 and 2 so that the pole moves at minus 2 so now when we'll linearize these we'll see that a difference has occurred I'll just group it so that you can see it in the same graph and I'll click on normalize and here you see that both of these graphs have different values this is the step to trans original transfer function and this is for the step to pole at minus uh, I didn't change the name it should be step to pole at minus 2 transfer function so you need to proceed in the same manner and then you need to calculate the rise time settling time peak time for each of them and you need to know that you are adding the pole to the open loop transfer function or the closed loop transfer function and you need to perform the analysis and the rise times the peak time the settling time and the percentage overshoot the setting uh, second task includes using simulink add a zero to the second order system and what you will do is that for adding a zero so when you need to add a zero at minus 200 or minus 20 or minus 10 what you will do is that you will edit the numerator coefficients of this system accordingly the for example we had 25 already in the numerator and when you'll add a zero at minus two for you for uh, example you say so what we'll have at uh, in the denom in the numerator is 25 and 50 because that would be equal to 25 multiplied by s plus 2 okay um, okay sorry this would be 50 and 25 so this is 50 s plus 25 because uh, sorry uh, it was already right so this is 25 s plus 50 because we have multiplied 25 with s plus 2 so that's right now uh, we'll just run it and then we'll perform a linear analysis to it you can see that uh, we have been given three plots I'll just linearize it and here is the step plot number four which is uh, for the system over here with the uh, zero at location minus two we'll just perform the grouping so that we can just see them in a single graph and then I'll normalize them now you can see that this is the system which is with to the original transfer function and this is for the system which has pole uh, sorry zero at minus two and uh, here you can perform different kinds of uh, analysis uh, like the rise time overshoot comparisons you can just click on uh, characteristics and peak response you can see that both of these systems are giving different overshoots one has the 25.4 percent overshoot and other one has the 115 percent overshoot so these are the kinds of uh, analysis that you need to perform in your reports and the comparisons that uh, you need to do uh, according to the poles and zero locations at different places which are minus 200 minus 50 minus 20 minus 10 minus 5 and minus 2 for the zeros and minus 200 minus 20 minus 10 and minus 2 for the poles then in the task number three he says that using simulink and the transfer function of prelab 3 with a is equal to 3 plot the step responses of the system when the value of b is 3 3.01 3.1 3.3 3.5 and 4 make your plots on a single graph using the simulink lti viewer so we'll see the prelab 3 here's the transfer function and the value of a has been given in the task number 3 and you have to change the value of b uh, according to the tasks given 
and then you'll uh, repeat all the process that we have done in the previous task that you uh, that means that you need to mark the output uh, loop points and then you need to do the analysis the control design the linear time analysis and uh, then you need to record the values uh, along with the graphs now the task number four says using simulink and the transfer function of prelab four with a is equal to 30 plot the step responses of the system when value of b is 30 30.01 30.1 30.5 31 35 and 40 make your plots on a single graph using the simulink lti viewer and record the percentage overshoot the settling time the peak time and the rise time for each response so prelab 4 is basically based on this transfer function and the value of a and b have been given in the task number 4 again in this report you need to do the thorough analysis uh, along with the comparisons the tables the graphs and then you need to make a discussion session that what have you learned from this lab and where do we uh, lie uh, according to the new positions of the poles and what happens if you add a pole to the left hand side closer to the origin farther from the origin and what happens when you add a pole to the open loop transfer function and to the closed loop transfer function and the same goes for the open loop transfer function zeros and the closed loop transfer function zeros so these are the four and five time uh, kinds of analysis that you need to perform uh, according to the percentage overshoot uh, the effects on the percentage overshoot the rise time and the settling time so this um, lab is really really important as far as your uh, course is concerned these are the basics of the control systems and this knowledge will be very 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 useful when you are going to design the controllers so basically when you know that the system is going to need a zero or a pole and what should be the location of the pole and zero to get the desired response so all these analysis would be possible only if you know the effects of adding a pole or a zero to the open loop or to the closed loop transfer function very correctly and you need to have this knowledge uh, really really at good levels so take good care of yourselves and submit the reports in time and if there's any question or confusion you can ask them uh, in the session or in the comment section so take care Allah Hafiz